Okay, thanks everybody for tuning in today. Hello and welcome to our Electrify webinar. I'm really excited about today. We're gonna to be talking about induction cooking and uh, how you can start to say bye-bye to gas in the kitchen. My name is Brian Stewart uh, with Electrify Now. I'm joined with my co-host, Joe Wachunas, who's gonna be, uh, we're gonna be kind of moderating today. And we have two amazing guests. We have Rochelle Boucher from Kitchens to Life, who I will introduce more thoroughly later, a professional yeah. chef who's gonna be doing some uh, demonstration for us about induction. And we also have Courtney Suskin from Standard TV and Plants, who's kind of heard it all in terms of uh, the sales questions around um, induction. And she's gonna be joining us a little later as we get into some of those specific questions about the differences between different kinds of options in that area. Uh, before we start, I wanna just give a shout out to our uh, elect Electrify Coalition. We have a, a bunch of different organizations here in Oregon who all are interested and in, uh, working on uh, electric electrification solutions in different capacities. And we have joined together to put this webinar series on. So Community Energy Project, Solar Oregon, uh, PAE, an engineering firm, Electrify Now, where Joe and I work, Passive House Northwest, and then we have two new members, New Buildings Institute just joined us last week, and we're really excited that the Environmental Center from Bend, Oregon has joined us just this week. And um, together, we're really trying to help get the word out about the benefits of electrification. So um, before we dive into the content, I wanna thank everybody who uh, made a donation. We, we asked for small donations to uh, charities, um, and kind of just to help us uh, spread the love. And in this case, we uh, were focused on the terrible tragedies around the Oregon wildfire um, this last couple of weeks. Uh, it's been amazingly brutal to watch. I'm happy that we have some rain here today. Um, but these four groups, Rural Organizing Project, Unite Oregon, Road Climate, and PCUN, are all doing amazing work to help the families and the workers that have been really impacted by the wildfire. So if you, thank you for those who, who gave some donations, we really appreciate that. And if anybody still wants to um, make a donation themselves, check out this uh, link tree here where you can actually buy a respirator or an air filter mm -hmm. for a family or a worker in need. So wow. thank you. And, and we really hope, wish for the best for people who have had this tragedy in their own backyard. So, um, all right, so today, this is what we're gonna be doing. We hope by the end of the session today that you'll have a really good handle on these things and, and have most of your questions answered around induction cooking. What is it? Why is it so good? You know, is it really better than gas? We're gonna be talking a lot about that. What are the specific benefits? What are the things you need to know? I'm not sure there are drawbacks, but there are definitely things that are different about this technology that you need to know. We'll touch on some of the health issues around cooking uh, and the, the um, indoor air pollution. Right. And we need to know how it's different than technologies you might have experienced in the past. And then towards the end, we're gonna start to talking about, you know, if you're interested in adopting a solution like this in your own home, what you should be looking for that might be interesting to you in terms of features of the different products. And importantly, where you can go to see them because as everyone knows, you gotta see before you, and really believe. Um, I also want to just touch on a, a little bit of context. You might remember this slide from our Electrify 101 uh, session where we talked about where emissions come from. And this slide talks about for us, you know, regular people living in homes in the United States, 60% of the emissions that we're responsible for come from the energy that we buy for electricity, transportation, and heat. So think of your your gas bills, your electricity bills, the gas you put in your car. There's obviously emissions from the things we buy and the food we eat. It's hard to influence those. You know, there's, there's lots you can do with good buying behavior. And we'll talk about that in upcoming sessions. But the big majority of it, the 60% there in the middle, it's theoretically possible to take that to zero. We've done it in our house. Joe's done it in his house. Many people have done it. And there's a lot of reasons that it's good to do that beyond just the carbon uh, impact. Because the good news is that this zero emissions energy is widely available, it's nearly unlimited. And these amazing high performance electric solutions, they're um, better and better every day. That's one of the things we're gonna be talking about in our show today. And they're cost effective and they're right here. 
So there's a lot you can do to take that big chunk that you're responsible for and eliminate it. And so we at Electrify now, we talk about these three steps of making sure you have clean electricity to your home and then electrifying your home with your appliances. And that's really what we're gonna talk about today. In future uh, sessions, we'll be talking about transportation as well. So I know most of you are here in Oregon, but there's some people who are tuned in from out of state. I shout out to my friend, Bob from Colorado, for example. But here in Oregon, 58% of homes use gas, methane, fracked gas, whatever you want to call it, for home heating of some kind, whether that's your furnace, your water heater, or your stove. So, you know, if you, if you think about the fact that for us to really avoid the worst problems of climate change, we need to basically stop burning fossil fuels. That means that we need to start thinking about this transition in our own homes away from using natural gas to uh, cleaner forms of energy. And when you, you know, add on top of that, that we've all kind of grown up with this idea that gas is clean, it's efficient, it's cheap. Um, and there's this perception that gas is the premium cooking experience. Um, and so that means that there's a lot of just almost like education that needs to happen at, as these new technologies come along to help people see how there's better solutions than gas. So and that's what we're really gonna be talking about today. It's why I'm so excited to have our, um, our guests with us. And I'm gonna do a little introduction and then turn it over. But I wanna introduce these two amazing people. So Rochelle Boucher is the owner of Kitchen for Life. She's been a corporate chef, um, very much celebrated. Uh, you'll see her quoted in places like Martha Stewart Magazine. She's been okay. corporate chef with Monarch Home, Sub-Zero Wolf, and Mila working to showcase the advantage of these new cooking technologies like convection, induction, steam cooking. Um, and then she recently co-founded Kitchens to Life. And this is a quote from her to elevate the electric kitchens conversation, educate stakeholders about today's remarkable cooking options and facilitate the adoption and enjoyment of electric kitchens for performance, people and planet. And we're gonna talk about all three of those things today. I also want to introduce Courtney, who's, like I said, going to mostly be joining us uh, in depth towards the end, but she's been working at Standard TV and Appliance for 20 years, has 20 years of experience um, with sales of kitchen appliances, worked with pretty much every major supply and appliance manufacturer and all the different product lines. She's very familiar with them. And uh, I think she makes a point of collaborating with homeowners, builders, remodelers, designers to make sure that uh, they get the right kitchen solutions for the customers that she's working with. So I'm really excited to have both these amazing panelists with us. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to uh, Rochelle. I would say, oh, a couple things. If you have questions, put them in the chat, please. We're, we're also gonna be posting um, links that you might, be, you might find useful. Right. And also would recommend that you pin your video to Rochelle for this next segment because you're gonna wanna see her with this cooking demonstration. That's gonna be a lot more interesting than looking at my face, for example. So um, I think you might wanna zoom in on her. I think she, it's gonna be really fun. And with that, Rochelle, thank you for joining us. It looks like you're in an amazing kitchen there. Right? Um, yeah, it's very lucky. They let me in all these places. Um, we'll touch on bio and sort of how I get into all these gorgeous places. But in, I just want to absolutely thank my second home, which is Monarch. I used to be their corporate chef for years. And um, I'm in the Santa Clara Monarch, Monarch Santa Clara showroom. And is it gorgeous? I am very lucky. Uh, I very much believe in this industry, the appliance industry. And I'm honored to share these incredible resources um, and it'll be really fun to get to know Courtney as well up there. But um, yes, and I want to give a huge shout out to Alex Theo. He really got this party started. And then Lisa Ascari, she's the manager here. And the whole team at Monarch, you guys are my family and I love it. But I also want to thank the Fisher Peichel team. We're not able to work on their, uh, their uh, top today. I'm working on a fabulous decor but they did a lot of work to help us set up. We just didn't get the piece in time, but I wanna thank Crystal so much, Joel, and certainly Trina. We are gonna play on Fisher Paykel very soon. 
um, it's just a pleasure to get to know all the technology. So Great. that's what I got. I wanted to say thank you. Great, thanks, Rochelle. Uh, and could you yeah. could you tell us a little bit about um, your background in induction and how you got started in the all electric kitchen? Yes, I am heart and soul an electric kitchen super fan. And the way that that happened, I was a restaurant chef. I've been a private chef for years, so I've been George Lucas's exclusive chef. Um, some legendary people that I can't even mention right now because I still have access to their house. I cooked for Metallica, all of them, and then individually. <laughs> so I've had incredible adventures as a private chef, but that means I'd have to go into houses and deal with all different technologies all the time, right? The other thing is I've done a lot of work in homeless programs. So I really understand, you know, cooking basics to being really fancy and I kind of fit it all in there. But I was very fortunate to be recruited into the appliance world many years ago by this company, Monarch, and um, just got to be a corporate chef in this industry. What that means is I get to play with all the things, read all the manuals. I know, Courtney, we do that, and um, get all these trainings. And my last job as a appliance corporate chef was with Mila in San Francisco. We had a 19,000 BTU big, beautiful gas range on one side and an innocent looking little induction top on the other. My job was to literally cook across those brand, the, those types of technology. All four of us in the showroom that worked there became induction super fans. Not because we're too lazy to clean it, because of how beautifully it works. So I am an induction fan. I also talk about the whole electric kitchen. When you put together an electric kitchen, it's not usually just the cooktop, although that switching out cooktops is, is a big thing but you've got to think about ventilation are you getting a steam oven the whole picture together and when you look at a whole electric kitchen you cannot believe the things you can cook i'd rather have a combi steam oven and an induction cooktop than a double oven and a range any day and i can cater your wedding with that so i became a super fan just from the actual act of cooking side by side but also we'd have clients come in that were worried about switching. And so I would introduce it and we would cook. I'd have Asian grandmas and we'd test things out on induction. We would, I would have families of Indian background where we would try out their pans and their food. Time and again, they were like, why didn't we know about this? So it is my job and it's probably the most important work of my life to elevate the electric kitchen conversation and just ask my industry to just show it 50-50 with gas until it takes over entirely. <laughs> That's awesome. So what are you gonna cook for us today, Rochelle? Menu, all right. For menu today, we're gonna do really simple rice, right? Rice can be actually kind of tricky. I'm gonna do some jasmine rice today. I'm gonna do Thai basil chicken, one of my favorite dishes. And then if we have time, I'll fry up a little egg that generally goes on top of that. So Thai basil chicken is a very famous Thai street food. It has just a few readily avail available ingredients and it's just a lot of fun to make. So uh, that's our menu today. Awesome. So, and uh, could you tell us um, as you get started what uh, about the technology of induction? Get us started there. Yes, it is awesome. So a couple quick um, clarifications of sort of uh, words that we use. So just so you know, a range is the cooktop and the oven all in one, okay? So when we say a range, it can be an induction range or it can be a gas range, but it's like the whole shebang, right? This is a cooktop. So it's a drop-in cooktop. We also talk about hogs. The induction energy sources are not burners in that they don't heat up. So we'll talk about that in a minute. So we often talk about hogs. Um, so those are some of the like technical words, sort of technical, but what I'm doing, I am working on the decor. Courtney gave it a shout out. It's a lot of fun. Um, and what it's doing, like all induction, I have hidden under here, there's an, uh, a coil, a copper coil. When that gets electrified, it creates a magnetic connection with the pan. 
Yes, we're going to talk about cookware. No, you don't need to change out all your cookware. I promise, but I will deal with that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this on right now. I have a triple ply, kind of a beat up old, all clad. I've probably had this for 20 years. Um, but I'm going to put this guy on and I'm selecting uh, with my finger, it's a finger push, just this region or this hob, right? And then I'm going to get this going. You've probably, there is a one through nine and then there's boost. Boost is really fast. So one thing that is a drawback with induction at first is things happen so much more quickly than you're used to. So you've got to kind of get used to not putting things on high and walking away. Um, so what I've done is I've got my water in here. We're just going to do jasmine rice. I've got some, you know, fancy chili salt because that's what I have. Um, and I'll put the rice right in. So I always rinse the rice, drain it out, gets rid of some of the extra starch. And a couple things that I really love, I'm just going to swish it around. So you're going to see this is already, I can already see movement in the water, the, the convection sort of happening in there. It's very cool. Um, one of the things I love is that, one of the things that's hard, and I understand this, is you don't see the flame and I get it. This actually has a little workaround on that. So I'll talk about that. And I understand in the beginning, you're like, ah, oh, I don't know. However, it's so easy quickly to learn what these numbers translate to. For me, cooking on a gas cooktop is kind of like cooking on an oven that has no temperature dial. I'm looking and I'm like, oh, is that high? Is that, I don't know. And you're constantly having to adjust. For me, this is almost up to a boil right now. So instead of kind of putting it in and walking away and then your rice is half boiled away, hi, done it, right? I have this almost ready to go. And so let me see if I have my lid. Maybe I don't. <laughs> cool. Hello. So this is almost ready. So good. Whoa, we are boiling. So now what I'm going to do is I have learned very quickly as of yesterday that my simmer is really beautiful at about a 4.5. What does that mean to you? Probably not much, but to me, it means that this is totally controlled. I'm not having to go and check. Now, honestly, I've only cooked on this once before, so I might check it once just to be sure. But what's remarkable is you can start to connect these numbers to control. It's fabulous. So I've got my rice cooking away. This is going to do it. But what I also have, you know, another sort of drawback that becomes a benefit of induction is there's lots of different interfaces, right? So there's slide screens and there's all kinds of stuff. The Fisher Pikel, which I had mentioned them earlier, their range has knobs. It's free. So if you really love knobs and I understand that, there's an induction top or range for you. So this has a slide screen, but one of the challenges slash again benefits is that they're so feature rich that sometimes it can be hard to sort of figure out all the things it can do. But right here, there's a little clock and it says timer. Awesome. So I'm just learning this right now because it's really easy. And I'm going to set this, I'm going to set it for 14 minutes. Set, done. Okay, I just learned something great. So this is timer. It's not going to shut off. It actually says this won't shut off your food. So you're getting a lot more education right from the start from this. So induction works again, magnetic. Um, what is quite remarkable, we used to oh, do this with $100 bills, but no one's, you know, no one has $100 bills lying around anymore. So I can just put a piece of paper underneath this. It's never going to catch on fire. Um, it's incredibly safe, right? So that's a little bit about what we're doing here, a little bit about the control, and we'll let that rice cook away. Rochelle, we have a question that came in that might be a good time to answer this. Sure. Someone was asking about um, how quickly the temperature changed. You had it boiling just a minute ago, now you want it simmering. Uh, how quickly the temperature control adjusts with the, with the cooktop? 
You know, it happens instantaneously. That's a fabulous question because when, again, when gas is considered this premium experience and, oh, it gives you more control, it doesn't. It just doesn't because when I turn off gas, there's so much residual heat. I'm hot, the food is hot. You have to remove the pan often. To your point, it happens almost in instantaneously. And I've been teaching induction forever. And I still, every time I boil a pound of water instantly and then shut it off and watch it turn off, I'm always in the back of my mind like, man, that's cool. <laughs> It amazes me. So you have not only this super heat and fast, but it's the control on the lower end that's exceptional. Now, right. again, because I just learned this pot yesterday, let me make sure my 4.5 is good. All right, I'm gonna turn it down just a little. But again, very easy to memorize what those temperatures mean. Okay, great. I know, Rochelle, I know from experience that cooking rice, you know, with gas that sometimes, you know, you, we, there's such an infatuation with big gas burners that have all this power and then they almost don't go low enough to, to not burn the rice in the end. I mean, how does that compare with, uh, with induction? Yes, so um, I'm a private chef and some a uh, couple of my clients have gas that was sort of in there. I actually bring my induction hob to my job because I it's such a better control. So to your point, even on the smaller burners. Now, many really high-end ranges, they'll have a little smaller burner in the back or with Thermidor, it switches on and off where you can get pretty low, don't get me wrong, but it doesn't have the same level of sort of precision. So once I make this once or twice and I write down, okay, uh, you know, three is boil, you get used to thinking of these temperatures, again, almost as though you're setting a dial on your oven and I don't want to give that up. Right? So should we talk about high heat cooking? Cause I'm ready for stir fry. Yes, and, and real quick, Rochelle, a quick question. Yes. And do the one to nine, uh, does that vary by brand from, from one to nine? And, and uh, Courtney, if you have any point, uh, chime in too, or is, it, is that usually a scale one to 10, one to nine, uh, lowest is one, 10 is highest. That is another challenge and I'll, I'll um, while I get ready, I'll pitch it to Courtney, but yes, it, it, that is a hard thing is like what's high, what's low. There's a lot of variation, but you know, Courtney will help you pick out what works for you. Any thoughts on that one, Courtney? Yeah, so every brand is a little different on how yeah. they set it, but essentially one is the lowest and nine or 10 is the highest. So, um, you do get used to it once you find the right one, um, where to set it. But everyone's a little bit different on how the control is. Exactly. And you know, you just have to learn the one that you have. And uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's tricky because they're so, they're so feature rich. So high heat cooking, we're doing like a nice controlled cooking. Let's talk about high heat cooking and kind of the elephant in the room in the induction world, which is cookware and woks. There's a lot of information about this. So this is my wok that I got at the wok shop in San Francisco, Chinatown. I went in, the guy knows everything about woks. And I said, I need an induction friendly wok. And he was like, no, they're not a thing. And I was like, it is a thing. So I had a little magnet. I stuck it to this and it works beautifully. So there's a lot of perception about induction doesn't work with a lot of things. Now, you have to understand induction has changed so much. If you think about the computer you had 10 years ago or five years ago versus the one you have now, that's kind of how quickly induction has become more user-friendly, more feature-rich, more intuitive. Um, and so the knowledge of like, what cookware can you use? The idea is that if a magnet sticks to it, it works, okay? So this works beautifully. I'm gonna get this cranking up and then we'll talk more about that because it's really one of the biggest myths. Um, this is on Boost um, right now. And what I'll do, I'll throw, let me see if I have a little water to chuck in there. Um, here, I have my drink. I'll put some in there. It's my La Croix. <laughs> So we'll get that happening. So when you're talking about cookware, triple ply works, K 
cast iron. You can go to the thrift store and get a cast iron pan. You want to make sure that it's not real scratchy and ripped up on the bottom because this is glass. But look, I don't know if you can see, but it's already sizzling and bubbling and boiling away. That's power. Awesome. And then if you can see that, I will shut it off. And there it goes. Awesome. So done. So that's how quickly it, it works. Um, pretty remarkable stuff. So on to the cooking part. And again, a little bit more on cookware as we go. Um, what I have found is most people's cookware, whether it's fancy, whether we're talking fancy or not, almost everything is going to work that you have at home today. Full copper doesn't work, um, sometimes specialty pieces, but you'd be actually really shocked. Um, I tell people don't change out all your cookware until you get your top because maybe you need one or two more pieces, but cookware is much more compatible to induction than people have ever thought. So back on booze, so I got to move here. Um, not a lot of chit chatting while we're heating this up, right? Note to self. So when it comes to walks, there is a big sort of um, controversy, I guess you could say. So I'm making this, um, let me talk about the recipe. I've got green beans, tis the season. Green bean season is coming around, so it's really good. I chopped up these green beans, it's about eight ounces and I'm getting them nice and hot, about a tablespoon and a half of, of a high heat oil, like a grape seed, uh, peanut oil if no one's allergic to nuts, right? And you can see maybe tons of, of smoke. We'll talk about ventilation in a little bit. As a matter of fact, let me use some. Um, put on the vent over there. Yeah, we'll get that vent going. Um, and we'll talk about that. So I'm just going to, Heat these, soften these up. And when you're talking about wok cooking, if you have a round bottom wok, certainly that's going to present a challenge. This is a big flat bottom wok, which is really exceptional. Um, and I'm going to then add in. But one thing it doesn't do is induction doesn't get super hot up the side. Right? So that's something that people talk a lot about. I'm adding ground chicken. One of the things that people talk about is called wok hay or the breath of the wok. And wok hay is a real thing where the heat is coming up from here. It's really hot and it's adding in flavor components. However, it's almost impossible to get that in any home setup. I try it on 19,000 BTU gas and I, it doesn't work. So it's quite remarkable that I'm getting super high heat on the bottom. This is absolutely cranking. You probably can't even see me now from the action. It's fine. So I'm just gonna chop up this chicken and we'll just let it cook for a little bit more. So Thai basil chicken, again, green beans, red pepper. I'm gonna add in at this point, some sliced shallots, about three quarter cup. Shallot is a really beautiful, small kind of onion, allium. Uh, it works great. I'm just breaking that up. But this happens very quickly. With induction, again, at first, you might burn some things, sure, because you don't have to crank everything on high unless you're stir frying. So I'm just breaking this up. And we'll give it a little bit more time here. And then again, here's your shallot, maybe one and a half that size. Then I'm going to add in towards the end, we're almost done here, some garlic and serrano chili. If you have those little Thai red chilies, those are awesome. You can leave them in whole. That way, if somebody bites into it, it's their fault because they could see it. And I'm adding this in. It looks good. I've got great, great heat. All right, so and my rice timer Michelle, is someone, that it is almost ready. 
Rochelle, someone asked about the handles and, and getting hot. Is it any different with induction than it would be with any other kind of? Yeah, look, not at all, not at all. It's awesome. The lab, so right now, like here, here's my scarf, not on fire. My face, not on fire. <laughs> you can have incredible heat generating, beautiful cooking happening and I have no residual heat anywhere. The heat is in the pan. It's genius. The handle stays so much cooler. Fabulous. So let me just add the sauce because again, if I chit chat too much, this gets done right before my very eyes. This sauce is a mixture of poison sauce, soy sauce, some fish sauce, a little bit of brown sugar. Mix that in. You're making me hungry. A lot of people have fish sauce these days. It's becoming more popular. I'm going to do a little bit of salt. And then the magic part is Thai basil. It's beautiful. If you can get holy basil, that's even better. It's another, but this is awesome. It is the one kind of basil that really holds up to cooking. It's delicious. So I'm actually gonna shut this off. It is plenty hot. And then I have about a cup of Thai basil and you can actually stir it in and let it wilt and just let it get incorporated in there. It smells good. I love it. Let me give it a little taste and then um, I'll talk about ventilation, but is there any questions on this right now? And we'll touch on ventilation in a second. Uh, we're, we're looking uh, that lots of folks are, are putting in questions and it's, it's all fascinating. I, I did want to say one thing on, um, on safety, if you want to comment, I've got two young kids and uh, yes. can you, can you speak to any of the safety you, that you were talking about that with the heat being contained into the pan? Yes, I can. Um, you can feel that. Yeah. So um, yes, yeah, safety is unbelievable. Um, not only safety, you know, what I think is, it's the devil you know versus the devil you don't know. That's how I see sort of induction in electric kitchens versus gas. Um, we're used to gas being able to burn us, light things on fire, burn our kitchens down, toxify the air, be really hard to control, leak, get methane in particulate. We're, we're kind of used to that. Like that's an okay thing. And yet, the drawbacks of induction, um, sure, it's a lot faster. You've got to kind of learn some new things. You can't char something right in the flame. That's what your broiler can do for you, by the way. Um, you know, those drawbacks, things we're used to, we kind of accept. For me, it's no longer acceptable that I can't control my heat and I'm not safe. And my house is getting hot. The difference with this is there's all the heat is going into the food. So I don't have to crank on the AC. I don't have to have all this makeup air. So you've got safety in terms of your, your air quality and safety in terms of kids. When I teach kids cooking classes, we do it on induction and everybody's safe. Now to that point, I have my rice, should be ready. Um, here's what I'll show you. So this is going to be hot. So be careful when you do this, but it is only like heat that's reflected back from the pan. So while I have weird freaky chefy hands, they're still made of skin. Um, so it's remarkable how little heat is on there. So very safe for kids and pets and grown humans. Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, a lot of people uh, can look at an induction cooktop and make it, it looks like an electric cooktop. I mean, if you did that on electric cooktop, you'd be going to the emergency room right now. Um, like a standard resistance glass top electric cooktop, you'd be burnt. Yeah, it, 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 it's those two things are totally convoluted together and it's frustrating. So I'm like, it's electric, but it's not. And I wonder if I can show you this cooktop. I don't know if you can see that blue flame. This is a really fun, it, this is a, uh, a decor and it has a pretend blue flame. So if you want to see flame, it has that for you. Um, so there's a lot of great techniques and engineering built in to make this really friendly. 
really easy to Rochelle, use. just when you did that, you we saw the blue flame for a little bit and then it went off, right? And yes. so, so tell us about that because when it went off, what, what was actually happening there? It was keeping me safe. Um, no, what it is is that with induction, unless there is a, a pan on there, it won't turn on or it will shut off. Or in that case, it'll wait for me. So it waited. It was just like, I don't see the pan. As soon as I put it back on, it kept, it took off from where we left off. So it's pretty remarkable. Um, and if this were to all boil away, if you're boiling something and the water boils down to nothing in, I think almost all cases, the induction will shut off. It reads that you have made a mistake. Oftentimes, if you have big boil overs, again, it will see that and shut off. So um, you can set timers. So when I was at Mila, I would boil a pot of stock quickly. I would set it at a low simmer for about six hours. It would shut off. And then when I went to leave for work, it was cool enough to put away. So love that. All right. Hey, Rice. Look at you. Look at you, Rice. Looking gorgeous. So smells amazing. Perfect timing. Fluffy, beautiful. Didn't even have to you know, move it off of there, but I'm putting it forward so you, maybe you can see that. So again, um, gas has more control. I don't know, maybe not. So this is all looking good. Should we do the egg? Yeah, so um, do you, yeah, let's do that. And then let's talk about the indoor air quality after you've done that, maybe. Would that make sense? Absolutely, yeah, I touched on it a little bit, but definitely. So what I'm doing over here, let me see if you can see this is I'm touching this double mode. So on this decor, there's two bridge burners. So a lot of like the Fisher Paykel has this, the Mila has it, Thermador, where you can bridge over. And then a lot of other um, economy priced ones do too, where you can bridge over this whole thing and put big pots. I'm selecting this hob right here and I'm sliding it up and I'm gonna go to about a seven. I wanna get, um, a nice crispy egg for the top of this. Um, but yes, indoor air quality, talk about that. I, we had the pleasure at Kitchens to Life prior to the shutdown earlier part of this year, we did a hands-on induction uh, class with some of the leadership of the Rocky Mountain Institute. Winning, we had a blast together and they released a really important um, study Hopefully I had something to do with that. Maybe not, but um, no, they were on that. So talk about that indoor air quality um, report because there's some really important things in that. Yeah, I'll do that while you're getting ready. Um, the report she's referring to, I think, um, Joe, do you have that link you could put in the chat? But it's called the Health Effects from Gas Over Pollution. Yes. And it was published by RMI, which you mentioned. Mothers Out Front was involved, Physician for Social Responsibility, Sierra Club, and it's an amazing thing. There's even good diagrams in there. I highly recommend it. It's very readable. It's not like super geeky report. But I'll just give you a couple of quotes from there. The yes. peak, peak indoor air pollution from gas stoves can reach levels that would be illegal outdoors. So basically what they're yes. saying is, you know, outdoor air pollution, there's real regulations for it. Not so much when it comes to indoor air pollution, but indoor air pollution can often be worse than what's happening outdoors. And then they also point out that children are particularly at risk from air pollution associated with gas stoves. And what you're worried about there is asthma. Primarily, there's other things that we're just learning about, but there's real correlations between the use of gas stoves and asthma in children. 42% higher risk of experience this, experiencing asthma symptoms and 24% increased risk of being diagnosed with asthma if you're a child that grew up, grew up in, a, in a home with gas stoves. So, you know, I think we're just learning more and more about air quality all the time. But one of the things that Rochelle said is that we're just used to gases, stoves, they're sort of smelly and put off all the stuff. Well, that stuff is, we're learning is really not good for you. So check it out if you're interested in that topic. Absolutely. It's really important stuff. Rochelle, quick um, question. I have a, uh, oh, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a family member that has asthma. And when we were, would cook on a gas top, that person would become instantly overcome. And so when we plug in our induction hob, fine. 
It's amazing. So I'm doing a little crispy egg here for the top of this. Can everybody, you can see that somewhat. Um, it's just awesome. So I've got, and I'm so used to now just like putting stuff all over the place because <laughs> I've been cooking on induction for so long. I'm not worried about, ooh, is, it, is this piece of paper going to catch on fire? It won't, right? Um, so the safety factors are incredible, but I'm not getting any extra heat. So um, indoor air quality, as well as just all of the makeup air, and, and I said before, the air conditioning that you need to just balance out the, the, the comfort in your house is remarkable. And for you guys in your area and us, we've had to be sh literally shut inside of our homes, hermetically sealed um, this week or last week and um, because of what's happening in the climate and it's a little heartbreaking. Um, yeah, you know, for sure. talking about that, just this uh, last week, if you were a member, if you're a member of Kaiser Permanente, you would have got an email from them advising you not to use your gas stove uh, while the air was so bad outside because when you use it and you turn your vent on, you're just sucking all that bad air in and then the stove itself is gonna make your air worse. So really. Absolutely, it's true. So this is a beauty. Look at my little crispy egg. Oop, I'm scooting it all the way off the pan. Don't do that. Um, but it's a lot, it's really remarkable the, the temperature control and just, it's just fun. It's just fun. Here, I'll put this guy over here. Hey, hey, Thai basil chicken, you rock. And then I'll shut this off. This also, all the induction tops will have some type of indicator that there is residual heat. So whether it says it in words or it stays red, there's a lot of ways because yes, there is underneath this cast iron pan, there's going to be, it's gonna be a little bit hotter than this pan because that pan, this pan has reflected a higher temperature back down because I was cooking on a higher temperature. So that is all of my cooking part. What I wanna do, I think I we've touched on a lot of things, but for me, the most important thing as we talked about was, you know, elevate that electric kitchen conversation. I wanna ask my industry, just show it. You know how much we love it. And I actually call that the clean little secret of the appliance industry is that almost everybody in the appliance industry loves induction and loves, again, the whole electric kitchen. So your speed ovens, your steam ovens, and how that all comes together. We've been to these amazing trainings. And so I'm just saying, let's get a plan, let's elevate it, because it's something that we already have a lot of love for. I think there's a lot of challenges because the codes in California and beyond have come kind of out of nowhere. And um, so we're catching up a little bit, but um, it's a pleasure to be part of that solution. Um, definitely check us out on Kitchens to Life. We are working on uh, elevating rebate programs. If you have a luxury kitchen, we can help you recycle that anywhere you are in the country if your kitchen qualifies. So we're working on all different kinds of ways to bring uh, for electrification now, right? So I want to turn it over Rochelle, to Rochelle, I want to, Rochelle, maybe this is you and Courtney. I want to just yeah. touch on it here, but you know, all the, um, pretty much anybody that makes an induction stove is also making gas stoves and vice versa, right? I mean, all the manufacturers yeah. are basically doing both. Um, but I, I love what you were just talking about. I mean, the, the industry itself kind of sees that this is the future. I think, is that fair to say? I mean, um, Courtney, what do, what do you think about that? Yeah, I mean, all the, almost all the manufacturers make both. Um, so it's just educating people why induction is better than anything else in the market. You said it. <laughs> and how about, uh, there's some questions, we'll, we'll read some questions out. I think it's a good chance to give both of you a chance to answer these questions. But one, uh, one question was, does it make a humming sound, a buzzing sound, uh, do induction cooktops make a buzzing sound? I can definitely speak to that because I've cooked on so many versions. What I noticed was it used to be a little bit more like that. Um, there used to be more of that. Sometimes what can create the humming sound is if you have a really wonky and uneven pan 
or a really thin kind of wimpy pan, which kind of vibrates a little bit. Um, I have an induction hob that I love. It's called the Heston Q. It's actually a smart cooking system. So it runs apps on my phone and it cooks the food. It's so fun. There's a little buzz to that um, in the beginning, but it's, it's so magical. I just consider it the sound of magic. But there, there can sometimes be a little bit of a humming sound. Um, but to me, it's gotten better, quieter, and it, it's um, easy to adjust to, I think, because you're not dealing with all the other drawbacks. But yes, that can be true. Yeah, I think so. Like I know with our, our range has a fan that I think is cooling the electronics maybe. Is that right? Is that what it's doing? Yes, and keep that in mind. Almost all of your ovens and wall ovens and ranges, everything that has sort of some type of technology built, they will often have a humming or a fan of all types. So whether it's, you know, your range or everything, because it's actually cooling that off. So when you have different levels of technology, there can be little sounds, um, you know, like a droid. <laughs> uh, uh, w one quick one, and then I know we have some specific questions for Courtney, but um, the uh, the cleanup, some people are talking about they have a glass electric cleanup and, you know, and, you, and this is a great time to show. Yeah, any comments on the cleanup for induction? Any questions? <laughs> she just showed it perfectly right I know, there. I'm like, oh, done, okay. <laughs> I love that. I mean, you know, so I was just cooking on this. This has already cooled down. This one's a little hotter, but even now I can just wipe on it. Clean up. Some people talked about scratches too. Could, could you just talk a little bit about that? Me? Yeah, or e either of you. Um, I know that's a question with glass cooktops and scratching. What have you found, Courtney? I, I definitely have experience. I, you know, I, I know a little bit about that. Yeah, so what we always recommend is any glass surface, whether it be electric or induction, the bottom of that pan needs to be very clean because yes, there's nothing that's, that's not scratch resistant. Um, it is very durable, the top is durable, but could it scratch? Yes. Um, so the bottom of your pan really needs to be somewhat clean. Uh, on there. I'm so weird because like every time I clean induction, I'm kind of like, oh, <laughs> I'm always amazed. I'm like, that's so cool. It's great. You also keep in mind too, is that there's something really important that happens in terms of cleanup. If I'm say frying bacon, right? And, and I always would do it on induction. Uh, because it's so much easier. So you're frying bacon or you do it in the oven. That's really the better way on, the, on a sheet pan. But if you're cooking bacon on here uh, or and on gas, it's going to happen a little bit faster here. Remember water boils at least two, sometimes three times faster on induction, but you're getting a lot of spatter everywhere, right? So it's a big difference if that spatter and extra grease hits a cold surface or if it is hitting all of this heat and flame and becoming further, you know, wafted up into the air. So you have a big difference in how much you're cleaning the surfaces around and your hoods. Um, and then also, and this is sort of to Courtney, when you start to put together an electric kitchen and an induction top, my clients were always super excited when they realized they didn't necessarily need to get like a gigantic hood that's the size of a Volkswagen bug, right? You can go with a leaner hood. So it's like leaner and cleaner. I love what you've been demonstrating here too, just about how your cooktop is just like becomes an extension of your countertop, right? I mean, it's just in a way, yeah. just more counter space because you can use yeah. it even while you're cooking. You can do prep there or stack things. Yeah. Yeah. And one point to that, though, that does happen. Sometimes spooky things happen when you're getting used to induction. If you cover, sometimes, you know, you get all fun and you got your cookbook and everything. If you cover, sometimes if you cover the, the um, controls, then you, it might shut down and you're like, what happened? Mm -hmm. So um, there are things that you really need to get used to, um, but then you realize it's just saving you from yourself. 
Uh, question, I, I think this is a question maybe we can field the Courtney. If you could talk about the ovens that are paired with induction ranges. Somebody yeah. Asked. So uh, what was the question? Oh, sorry. The, the question was, could you talk about the oven that's paired with an induction range? Yeah. So, I mean, many, when you get an induction range, right, the whole unit itself, you're getting a very fully loaded range, right? Because induction is, is nice. It is a very higher end, an appliance. So many manufacturers make an induction range. Um, majority will have all electronics. Fisher Paykel, for example, has knobs, right? A lot of people like knobs when they talk about a range, but you are getting either digital, majority is a digital um, range, or some have knobs. Right. What, what are some of the other, you know, I know there's, this is, there's a lot to see. And so there's no, um, uh, there's no replacement for going in and, and actually seeing some of these products, but give us a little bit of an overview about kind of some of the range of features that are available, you know, that someone might want to think about um, if you're shopping for one of these. I mean, the knobs, we definitely won. I guess there's cooktops versus ranges. Maybe you yeah. could talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so a lot of, when, when someone comes in and they have an existing, whatever it may be, a lot of it is a design aspect. So if you already have a cooktop, majority people will go with another cooktop like Rachel's cooking on. Some people don't, you know, if you don't have a huge kitchen, um, a lot of people have ranges. And so it really comes down to the space in your kitchen and the design that you're trying to go for, um, which will then help us figure out what suits your kitchen and your needs. Awesome. Here's another question for you, because, you know, like like most products, you know, there's a wide range of price points, right? In um, induction, you know, it's probably starting in the maybe thousand dollar range or something like that on the low end, but they can go all the way up to, you know, 8,000 maybe. And so talk a little bit about what you get when you go up the, the, the price range. Yeah, that's a good one. So yeah, I think a big part is, you know, induction is not the least, most least expensive out there. It is a little higher priced. So yes, they are becoming less expensive um, as the industry starts to see more and more people want them. So as you step up the line, some people pay more money for a name, right? That's just how the world works. You want something that has a certain name on it, great. You're going to pay top dollar. Um, the second part to it is as you step up into different induction ranges or cooktops, you get bigger zones to cook on, more powerful zones to cook on, and right. some, some offer the entire cooktop or range to cook on. So you're paying for bigger surface to cook on, uh, right. flexibility, and more power when it comes to induction. Also, I think I saw a question about the oven part almost every one of induction ranges will have convection. You don't have to use the convection in the oven. They have the option to do convection or bake. There is a very big difference between the two, uh, but almost every induction range will have both options to choose from. Absolutely, absolutely. And people can't believe to that point, it's amazing what you can do in ovens today. Like I was saying before, I cook bacon on a cooktop zero times. I always do it in the oven. I broil, um, I char tortillas and I char um, uh, pita breads in the broiler. So it, it's remarkable. And then again, when you're thinking about that whole electric kitchen, if you pair again an induction cooktop with a really tricked out microwave, like the GE Advantium does all kinds of fun things or you know, Mila, Thermidor, all those guys have combi steam ovens. Those things are amazing. You can do your rice and vegetables and everything in there as well as use it as a regular oven and it becomes an extension of your cooktop. Speed ovens are phenomenal. So the days of like double ovens and, you know, all of these things, those are gone. And you can do so much with these few beautifully appointed appliances at all different kinds of price points. 
There, there was a, a question here I want to make sure we cover about, um, we touched on it about venting in hoods. And um, I, think, I think it's important to know that whenever you cook at high heat, no matter what the, sur the surface is, you're going to create particulates, whatever the fuel source, very high heat. So you need a vent if you're going to be cooking at high temperatures, no matter what the technology is. But I think it's fair to say, and you guys jump in, that with induction, you can get by with a smaller vent because there's just less stuff being sent up um, either from the gas that's unburned or the other, um, you know, like nitrous oxide, carbon monoxide, all these other, uh, even formaldehyde, that, that there's byproducts of burning natural gas. You just don't have that with um, induction. So there's less to vent, but you still need vents. Don't you think that's fair to say? Yeah. 100%. And Courtney, do you find that if people get a sleeker but appropriate and powerful hood, as opposed to the big giant restaurant style hoods, they'll tend to use them more because they're not as loud? Are you, is that like a... Yeah, I mean, the main function of a hood, right? People, I think, uh, get the, they think that a hood is, um, it doesn't do anything, but honestly, a hood is probably the most important, almost the most important part of a kitchen because yes. anytime you are cooking, you want to pull any type of smoke or grease or anything that is coming off that top up and out, right? And so um, do you have to have something extremely powerful for induction? Probably not um, compared to something with gas. Um, some people like a pretty looking hood, but you don't need a very powerful one with induction. But use it, right. Use it, oh, please use it. Please. Yeah. Um, quick question, it says, what's the lifespan of an induction range? And You know, Yale appliances, and we'll talk about them. So I have um, come on LinkedIn with me. I love LinkedIn. One of my favorite uh, friends in the industry that I met on LinkedIn is the uh, Steve Scheinkopf, and he's of Yale, he's out of Yale Appliances in Boston area. He is one of the best content creators in the entire industry and better than, than uh, people in other industries. He has fabulous induction buying guys, and he doesn't care, Courtney, if you guys use it, we use it. He's like, use it, share it with the world. But he talks about um, price points and buying guides, and it's really awesome. So I'm sure he has something on that. Yeah, I just put a link to, uh, in the chat to that buying guide. It's amazing. It has a lot of the information we've been talking about today yep. in terms of why induction is great, but it also has some really good information about brands and reliability and all that sort of stuff. Deep, yes, deep data driven because they also have been servicing appliances for decades. So they have all this very deep data on reliability. Um, we had a wonderful, he was our guest speaker at a kind of a, a think tank call that I have every month with the uh, Building Decarbonization Institute. I was honored to bring Steve to the table and he absolutely prefers induction. No holes barred, no varnishing from reliability function. He'll say it straight out. And so, um, you know, he's an old dog in terms of, a, well, he's not old, but he's <laughs> been around the appliance world for a long time and he is unabashed about his embrace, embracing of the technology. And so um, that's always wonderful to hear that, you know, there's many of us. <laughs> yeah, that's really good. Hey, I think we should probably start to wrap up. I wanna to try to honor our one hour of commitment here. And I know a lot of people have other things they need to get onto. So I wanna first of all say, thank you so much, Rochelle. And thank you, Courtney. I, I would say um, if, if people here in the Oregon area um, wanna go see some of these products, standard TV and appliance, I highly recommend it. They've got a great selection. Uh, I think Courtney works in the Beaverton showroom where they've got lots of stuff for you to see. And there's nothing like seeing it to really believe it. Um, they're live kitchens there, I believe. Is that right, Courtney, where people can actually try some of these things? That's right. Yeah, we have 17 live kitchens. And for induction, what? I think they're, yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, induction wise, I think we have five or six that are live that you can play with. Awesome. Which is awesome. So thank you both. There's a couple things. I'm going to share my screen here for a minute because there's a couple things I want to just uh, wrap up on here. Um, so 
before we take off, first of all, thank you so much to uh, Rochelle and Robert and everyone at Kitchens to Life for helping put this on and Standard TV and Appliance, you guys have been great in helping us to make this happen. Fisher Pakel that uh, Rochelle mentioned earlier, really helpful in making this happen today. Um, I also want to just let people know that there's tons of information on our website on Electrify Now about all things Electrify. And I also want to make sure that people are aware of our trade allies. These are people that we work with. We don't have a financial commitment with any of these people, including the ones that I just mentioned. But we do have a collection of trade allies who will give you good service. They won't try to talk you out of these electrification solutions. And they'll, in some cases, give you a discount if you mention our name. So I'd highly recommend if you've got an electrification project, whether it's a furnace or a, uh, HVAC system, whatever it is, check out our website on the contractor and um, products page. Uh, the last thing I want to mention, just kind of housekeeping, if you enjoyed this, please uh, check out some of our other upcoming webinars. We'll be talking about climate justice in October. Really excited about that. Have some really interesting panelists to talk about those uh, really important topics. We're going to be diving deep on heat pump water heaters in November, and we're talking about community solar in December. So you can uh, find out the links to all this um, if you if you will send some links out to you on, to make that easy to sign up. So thank you very much for tuning in. This has been exciting. Thanks again to our panelists. That was fantastic. And uh, thank you all of you out there listening in. Good luck with your electrification projects. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.